What's up guys, I'm Alan with Edge Autosport and today you might be thinking to yourself, it has not been six months since I've seen a video from Edge Autosport. And you'd be correct. That is because we are back to our regularly scheduled programming. Anyways, today's video is all about the intake manifold spacers. We have the Boomba throttle body spacer, and the Boomba intake manifold spacer, and we're gonna be installing them on Project Half Uh For those of you that missed the last video that we did, we installed the Garrett PowerMax Turbo and the Garrett Intercooler. You can check that video out in the link in the description. For today's video, we're going to be doing some baseline pulls on Project Half Sin as it sits to get a nice baseline for today. And then we're gonna install these spacers and see if we gain any power. The theory behind the spacers is pretty sound. You're basically increasing your intake manifold volume and your intake manifold runner length, both of which are supposed to increase torque. Now, will this be enough to actually show an increase on the dyno or is it negligible? That's what we want to find out. If you believe the descriptions, you're going to gain 15 horsepower from each, which means we're going to be bolting on 30 horsepower to Project Half Cent today. I'll let you guys put your comments down there and let me know whether you think that's going to happen or not. But anyways, let's do a baseline pull. Let's see where we're at right now. And then I have to get my hands dirty and install these spacers. There we go. I'm afraid. Will it work? Oh, yep, that was it. All right. So one of the first things we're gonna notice here after having pulled our intake manifold out, and one, it is very dirty. Two, uh, it is full of oil because it is a focus and they just, they get a lot of oil in the intake manifold through the PCB system which is why we highly recommend catch cans. And at some point in the not too distant future, this car will be getting a catch can. Uh, but for now, we are just doing the spacer. Yeah, you can see all, see all the oil down here in the charge pipe. You can just see it like, it's nice and loose. You can just see it sitting right there in that little crack. But um, yeah, that's through the PCV, so. Uh, your motor's ingesting that. Uh, you probably won't be able to see on camera, but oh, gross. So, so that's an intake manifold removal on a Focus ST, and what time do we start this? Five minutes. Yeah? <laughs> the magic of editing, probably only about a minute. Yeah, so oil has a really low octane. So if this is going through your engine, you're reducing your octane by having oil going through. Again, for the fifth time in this video, catch cans are worth it. This one, it only goes one way. You can't really mess it up, uh, but you want the seals pointed towards the head 
and then the seals that are in the manifold will be on the flat side on the back. And there are plenty of other options for these too. Like this is not the only kit on the market. Um, this is just what we happen to have in stock right now. Uh, but uh, Damon makes spacer kits. Uh, I believe JBR makes a spacer kit. Actually, I don't know for sure if he does. I, think, I know he has a throttle body spacer. Um, and uh, there are a couple other other ones. You can also get them with fuel rails. Obviously, if you're doing like four port injection, uh, you can get kits with fuel rails um, built in uh, to add those extra injectors. Um, but yeah, one of the kind of nice things about this is it is pretty well port matched to the factory ports. And you have this divider port right here is knife edged uh, or very close to knife edged on the manifold spacer but as you can see it is nowhere close to knife edge on the head itself so that gives you a little bit better flow uh split it's gonna probably cause less turbulence and things like that because coming out of the manifold it's just four open ports with no split so this divider helps uh reduce kind of the turmoil that has occurred uh, from the air velocity hitting this large split in the runners. Most people will think about oil going through their engine and think, oh, oil shouldn't be going through my engine. That's bad. But they don't know why. And the why is because you have a lot of, well, because it's lower octane and you don't want lower octane going into a high performance engine because that's how you get night or that's how you get knock. So anyways, with the Boomba Spacer, the only thing to really remember here is you have this seal, which that's gonna seal against the throttle body, uh, and the factory seal seals against the backside of the spacer. Uh, you do have this little bung here, which is um, can be used as a meth bung or temperature sensor, whatever, I don't know, whatever you wanna do, nitrous, have fun. Uh, anyways, you can use this uh, for various things. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you put it in a place where you can access it later if you decide later to use it. That way you don't have to take it off again. But in most cases, you probably will end up taking it off again if you decide to use that bung just because of the other installed things that are going on. But anyways, we wanna make sure that when we put this on like this, that we can access it. So from that point right there, we can't access it. <laughs> so we're gonna rotate it around to the other side where we can, like that. Because this goes just like that. Perfect. All right. Now we got to finagle everything back where it goes as we put it back in here, which is always fun, especially with the wires and everything. And having no good way to reach stuff. That line back up. I wonder how many boost leaks we're gonna have after we get this all buttoned back up. There we go, that's a lovely click. This is probably one of the easiest intake manifolds that I've ever removed from a car. So install for this, it's definitely not hard. Um, which kind of makes me think like, even if we only get like a very negligible amount of power out of it, it still provides a few options of things you can do in the future as far as like running direct port meth injection, uh, running meth injection down here at the throttle body. Um, there's other things that they're good for besides just making power. Um, and it's a really nice billet piece that uh, for the most part, you're just gonna cover up, but it does give you an opportunity to pull apart and uh, the front end and clean your valves if you are so inclined, which 
if I had a walnut blaster, uh, we would be doing a secondary video that was about cleaning valves today, because ours are dirty. And this car only has 20 something thousand miles on it, I think, maybe 23 right now. So that's not a lot of miles, but that's a lot of crud. Another thing water meth injection is good for. So if you're doing these and you're gonna run direct port meth or run the single port water meth injection, uh, you're gonna help keep your valves clean. I will say I am genuinely curious how much this is going to make because I've never actually tested it back to back before like this. I've had cars that have come in with them and without them and I've never really been able to correlate what mods did what on the dyno in terms of how they made power. So this will be a true test and uh, I'm, I don't know what it's gonna do. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm along for the ride just like you guys. So we're gonna find out together. One thing that I really like about this project is that like we, we have the ability to do all these kinds of tests because like with the full sin project over there, it's uh, so far gone that most of the people that are watching our channel, I mean, it's gonna be cool to watch, but it's not gonna provide any useful information for them unless you're planning on building a monster uh, half mile slash quarter mile build. Um, but for like most of you guys, you just want to get a little more power out of it, have fun on the street, and just enjoy the car. And and uh, that's where these kinds of tests uh, come in handy, which is stuff that I wasn't ever able to do before uh, because while well, we didn't own a car that uh, was we were able to do it with, uh, we kind of did everything on that car all at once and just went, uh, full, went full send with it. Uh, whereas with this car, we're able to take our time and kind of show you guys some of the more important details, which is pretty cool. So you and I are both learning together because we kind of skipped over this stuff in the beginning anyways. And I don't have the ability to uh, uh, discern when you have different cars coming in with different mods. I can't just say, oh yeah, this mod contributed this or whatever. It's very much subjective in that regard. Okay, so only little issue, little snaf snafu, which you barely call a snafu, is this wire that comes down to the map sensor right here. Uh, was barely long enough to get it off the manifold and tucked away while we could get it out. Uh, with the manifold spacer in there, uh, we couldn't. I couldn't get it back around to where it plugs into the map sensor. So I just unplugged the rail pressure sensor down here. That gave me enough room to get it over this uh, clip and where it needs to go and then it, and then it tucks back under right here and plugs back in like it's supposed to and connects to the map sensor like it's supposed to so we were all plugged in there uh we still have to install the symposer delete but everything else is on and tight and connected where it's supposed to be it does make it a little bit tighter to work on now that we've got the spacer in there because now all that that extra inch of room that we had to stick our hands in there is gone. Okay, JP, your precious symposer is installed and now we can get back to actual testing of the spacer and of the intake manifold spacer and the throttle body spacer. So, so now we're going to find out all the things I forgot to plug back in and we're going to find out all the uh, little boost leaks that uh, I probably forgot to tighten. And uh, so yeah, put in the comments what you think I probably forgot. like that and then you basically just line it up so it's straight
from what I can tell because you've essentially moved it straight back. And then I need to tighten it. As well. I think it worked. Just clicked in. Plugged in. All right, I think we are done and uh, stealthy sleeper status, I guess you could say. This really is a sleeper. I mean, we got the stock air box. The only thing you can really tell is the front mount intercooler and, and it's got a bigger turbo that looks like a stock turbo. So I guess you could really call this thing a sleeper at this point. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, get it back up to temperature and do some more pulls and see if the power's changed. We'll be able to compare uh, from the baseline to now and see if it's changed, how much it's changed, and where it's changed in the power curve. Uh, all right. Okay, guys, so we made 271, I think 0.9 horsepower before and 356 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, so that's kind of what we're going for, but the peak numbers also don't necessarily matter because I mean it may not gain anything in terms of peak or peak horsepower and, and torque but it might pick up 10 to 15 horsepower or torque in different parts of the rev range even if the peak numbers don't change at all and in that case that would still be a good thing so I'm going to go ahead and drive the car and get it warmed up a little bit and then do a few pulls and we're going to kind of see where it averages out. Okay. Okay, so let me walk you through real quick what I've done here. I've got three runs that I've made back to back to back. Um, first without the spacers installed, and then the second set is with the spacers installed. And then I am overlaying the first run from each before and after, the second run from each before and after, and then the third run from each before and after. So they're all just, uh, each one is overlaid for the same run. So one and one, two and two, three and three. And the reason I did that is because looking at the temps doing the back-to-back -back runs, our Garrett intercooler is getting a little bit heat soaked uh, on the dyno just with that back-to-back -back, uh, nature. And I mean, dyno airflow is never as good as street airflow. So we have the three runs overlaid here. And if anyone cares to guess in the comments now how much power it made, uh, you better do that right now because I'm about to tell you. Uh, we got a big old goose egg <laughs> on this. It pretty much ran identical uh, all three pulls, uh, each one, like, so as each pull lost just a little bit of torque due to the heat soak, uh, getting higher. Uh, and the car actually kind of had, uh, had a lot of time to cool off between the first three runs and the second three runs with the spacers. Uh, so the runs were identical. All, like all, there's just like little bitty variations here and there and nothing that I could point to and say, oh yeah, the spacer did that. Uh, so I think uh, we're going to have to call those a myth busted. Uh, that doesn't mean that if you have them, you're not going to uh, be able to use them for something. Uh, they do look good in the engine bay if you're not covering up with 
the uh, factory engine cover. And if you're wanting to run water meth injection, they are very useful for that, especially if you're wanting to do direct port, uh, which you can do with this Boomba spacer, or if you wanna just run a spacer uh, for that port uh, right after the throttle body, uh, that's a really good option too. Um, also, there are charge pipes that have bungs for uh, water meth injection uh, in them as well. But as far as making power, at least on our current setup, the intake manifold spacer and the throttle body spacer have not done anything to to show that they would make more power so can't say that i'm entirely surprised here i was kind of hoping to maybe see a little bit of a bump here and there maybe not necessarily peak gains but you know just uh, gains in different parts of the curve but yeah not, didn't get anything uh nothing to really speak of all right, so that's gonna wrap up this video answering the question, how much power you get from an intake manifold spacer and a throttle body spacer. That answer being zero. But anyways, make sure you subscribe to our channel because in the next video, we're gonna be bolting on an intake to Project Half Send on the dyno, and we're gonna show you how much power you can gain from an intake. I think we're going with the Mishimoto. Anyways, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, we want to hear from you in the comments. Let us know what other things you want us to test, and we'll catch you next time.